barges approach shore ready for instant action. Some bearing artillery and rocket guns already opening fire. The armies of the United Nations have made their first landings on the soil of Western Europe. This is D-Day. King County's home time efforts were spread across the county. There wasn't a community or frankly a person who wasn't involved in some way in the war effort. Almost from the start of the war, King County geared up uh, its industrial production dramatically. Our airplane manufacturers, our ship builders, our tank manufacturers, every industry in the county went full time and even overtime to make the war successful, to really build the material and the products that were going to win World War II. It was a boom period for King County. The population dramatically increased almost overnight. Tens of thousands of new residents, and sometimes those were residents that were different than the community that had been here before. An influx of African Americans, for example. And different people came into the workplace as well. We saw women assume a major role in home front industries. Boeing was the big player. Boeing was making the B-17. Later on, it was making the B-29. These were the super fortresses of the air that literally won the war. Those planes were some of the most sophisticated technology in the world at that time. Thousands of parts that had to work in perfect precision, and they were turning them out day in and day out. All day long, whether rain or shine, she's a part of the assembly line. She's making history, working for victory, Rosie. The you know, we call them Rosie the Riveters, and sometimes that's a stereotype because women assumed roles at every level of the industrial economy. They were on the factory floors, but they were engineers, they were administrators, they were really doing the work of our new expanded industrial economy. Working overtime on the riveting machine. Oh, who are the people in your neighborhood, in your neighborhood? in your neighborhood. We were probably the closest urban center to Japan uh, in the United States, so we were very concerned about uh, invasion. And so we tried to disguise some of these enormous efforts. The Boeing plant was covered on its roof with essentially a camouflage village. It looked like a little city, a little urban area, so that if you were to survey it from the air, you would assume it was another neighborhood. What you wouldn't know is that the weapons of war were being manufactured inside, and it worked. Japanese American citizens were uh, interned. They were removed from their homes. They had to leave their businesses. They had to leave their schools uh, almost overnight. And they were sent to internment camps where they spent the remainder of the war years. Japanese American communities on Vashon Island, in Bellevue, throughout the county were really upended. And what had been thriving farms and thriving businesses and home life was completely gone in just a matter of days. Uh, many years later, the United States realized that that was a violation of basic constitutional rights. There's much to be learned from the Japanese American internment experience that we must protect those American rights. That's what we're fighting for. This was the greatest generation. The men and the women who served on the front lines and who served on the home front really did something remarkable. Winning a war against tyranny, ensuring that democracy would thrive not only in our country but around the globe, and making sure that our community here at home at King County was healthy and strong and united. I think we all should feel eternally grateful for the contributions of those who served during World War II.